Like classic film noir before it, the dark and dangerous world of neo-noir is a vast, fascinating genre. Featuring sinister settings and muddled morals, the darkness of the human soul is examined to reveal a host of uncomfortable truths. However, what exactly constitutes neo-noir can be a little difficult to pin down. The term is bandied about carelessly, being applied to almost any modern crime thriller. Some argue it's simply a stylistic process or an exercise in nostalgia. One plausible description lies in its relationship with classic film noir. Whilst the older genre was dark and complex, the Hayes Code dictated that good would always triumph and that no crime would go unpunished. Neo-noir, free of such shackles, was able to subvert such disingenuous ideals and present works with a bleak, pessimistic outlook. With a more outward-looking lens, the genre has a more sociological bent than its psychologically focused predecessor, performing a graphic autopsy on a rotten world where justice is rarely served. Since the genre's rise in the 1970s, its own sub-genres have emerged. Blade Runner, a masterpiece which needs no introduction, is considered to have spawned the genre of cyberpunk by virtue of being a neo-noir set in a grim, future dystopia. Cyberpunk, in turn, has spawned endless derivatives. Steampunk, dieselpunk, clockpunk, biopunk, the list is endless. So, with this understanding that neo-noir is an admittedly vague term, let's wade through the murky waters and at least try to dredge up some of the best the genre has to offer. I'm Will for What Culture, and here are 10 gripping neo-noirs you must see before you die. 10. The Long Goodbye Released just one year before the genre-defining Chinatown, The Long Goodbye could be argued to be more of an anti-noir than a neo-noir. Directed by maverick filmmaker Robert Altman and adapted from Raymond Chandler's 1953 novel of the same name, Altman seems to take great pleasure in tearing down every genre convention and cliché that had become stale in film noir over the last 40 years. Here, Chandler's iconic gumshoe Philip Marlowe is reimagined as a man seemingly out of time. A disheveled, shambling anachronism, he feels like a man of the 1950s exhaustedly navigating a decadent, self-obsessed Hollywood. He's not without his wit and brilliant investigative skills, however, solving what seems like the primary case before the day is out and effortlessly snarking at gangsters and their goons even when he's on the back foot. Upon the film's release, critics were horrified by what they saw as an attack by Altman on the author and a beloved character. Over time, however, the film has been recognised as a seminal deconstructive work, de-romanticising the detective genre and paving the way for film noir's evolution into neo-noir. 9. Chinatown Widely considered to be where neo-noir truly began, Roman Polanski's labyrinthine Chinatown set the dark, tragic tone for the genre. Starting out much like a classic film noir mystery, Jack Nicholson's understated turn as a cynical private investigator sees him become embroiled in a conspiracy far larger than the simple infidelity case it initially seems. Inspired by the real-life California water wars of the early 20th century, the film sees the Los Angeles Department of Water and Power sabotaging the water supplies of local farmers in order to facilitate a ruthless land grab. Here, Chinatown's villains are not underworld crime lords or crooked cops. Instead, they're bureaucrats and wealthy land barons, carrying out their hateful campaign with no scrutiny, having placed themselves firmly above the law. The bleak final act paints a gloomy picture of a world where power and wealth will always triumph over morality and justice. Chinatown is a brutal yarn, a scathing indictment of the worst excesses of capitalism. It is emblematic of neo-noir's trademark mood of pessimism and distrust of authority. 8. Fargo The Coen brothers have an impressive portfolio, to put it mildly, and one of their greatest works is undoubtedly 1996's crime caper Fargo. Spawning a successful anthology series almost 20 years after its release, the film is a dark but somehow hilariously farcical cat and mouse thriller surrounding some of the most preposterously named characters imaginable. Set in the chilly climes of Minnesota, the film centers on the machinations of Jerry Lundegaard, a deceitful and utterly incompetent auto dealer. Jerry has his own wife kidnapped in order to surreptitiously extort the ransom money from his father-in-law, but owing to the two kidnappers' similarly bungling nature, they leave a trail of destruction which is picked up by heavily pregnant police chief Marge Gunderson. 
Fargo's bizarre mix of extremely dark events and quirky deadpan humor make for a film with a unique and memorable tone. With most characters presenting the region's trademark Minnesota nice demeanor, all cordial agreements, head nods, and quiet self-effacement, the film's moments of violence and primarily nihilistic message are balanced by much-needed warmth. You'll laugh a lot, but you'll feel guilty for it. 7. Nightcrawler Despite sounding like a standalone outing for the X-Men's second best Blue Mutant, Nightcrawler is a withering critique of an unscrupulous media industry and our insatiable desire to consume sensationalist news, which is altogether less fun. Jake Gyllenhaal, in one of his finest performances as the world's biggest dick, plays Lou Bloom, a freelance photojournalist with nary a shred of decency or compassion. Tracking violent crimes and fatal tragedies during the night, he records their aftermaths and sells them to a local news station whose morning director, concerned over declining viewing figures, pushes for increasingly dramatic and horrifying footage. Lou eventually turns to tampering with crime scenes in order to make his footage more impactful and even sabotages a rival journalist's vehicle, resulting in a near-fatal crash which he then capitalizes on. Taking place almost entirely under the grimy streetlights of nighttime Los Angeles and in dimly lit newsrooms, the world of Nightcrawler is murky and foul. Lou, devoid of any character arc, is almost refreshing in how utterly despicable he is. Snake-like and manipulative, and driven entirely by sociopathic greed, he holds the audience hostage on a journey to the darkest depths of human depravity. 6. Thief the directorial debut of Michael Mann, pioneering director of crime works such as Heat and Collateral, Thief is the classic tale of the master criminal trying to go straight, executed with exemplary aplomb. Mann's gritty, slick style is on full display even this early on in his filmography, as Tangerine Dream's hypnotic soundtrack underpins dual thief Frank's attempts to finally escape his life of crime. The combination of Mann's bombastic direction and Khan's charisma make for a tense and engaging thriller with a feeling of true authenticity and a sense of palpable, constant danger. 5. Drive A film very much in the mold of Thief, 2011's Drive may be Nicholas Winding Refn's most conventional film to date, but his oppressive, surreal style still makes this an unusual ride. The film concerns a getaway driver taking a seemingly run-of-the-mill job only for things to go awry and result in an onslaught of brutal killings and betrayals. The film's first hour is innocuous and somewhat romantic, setting up a tender friendship between Ryan Gosling's unnamed driver and his neighbor. However, shortly after the halfway mark, a botched robbery sees the tone flip drastically. Shots are fired, throats are slashed, and heads are stomped on with an almost grindhouse level of violence and gore. It's like watching most of Before Sunrise and then changing the channel to only catch the ending to Taxi Driver. 4. Mystery Road Far away from the street-lit nights of LA, Ivan Sven's noir western instead subjects the viewers to the blistering heat and blinding sun of the Australian outback. This hostile wasteland provides the backdrop for Aboriginal Detective Jay's investigation into the discovery of the body of a young indigenous girl, and a sinister racket that goes far deeper than just one murder. Jay, an outsider to everyone, is stonewalled at every turn, from racist farmers to his own superiors in the police force. Alienated by his white colleagues and ostracized by the indigenous population who feel betrayed by him, Jay has no one to turn to, but presses on through sheer grit, determined not to let another murder victim be forgotten. Mystery Road's social commentary is front and center throughout. It's a sad snapshot of Australia's ongoing racial tensions, of forgotten communities, and an appalling lack of concern for its indigenous people. While the film moves ponderously between dilapidated ghettos, scorched farmland, and hazy plains, the atmosphere weighs heavy, finally reaching an explosive finale with one of the most unique cinematic shootouts in recent memory. 3. Winter's Bone from the punishing heat of the Australian outback to the bitter, penetrating cold of Missouri's Ozark Plateau, Winter's Bone is an unrelentingly grim exploration of poverty, abandonment, and family ties. Jennifer Lawrence has her breakthrough role here as Ree Dolly, and it's arguably the best performance she's ever given. Looking after her mentally ill mother and two young siblings, Ree's life consists of helping her destitute family survive with little to no means of providing for themselves. Her father, a meth cook who has not been seen for some time, is revealed to have skipped bail following an arrest, and their house is on the line having been put up as part of his bond. Fearing that they'll be turfed out with nowhere to go, Ree sets out across the meth-ravaged countryside to piece together any clues to his fate. 
Her journey pits her against distant family members, coming face to face with the harsh realities of life and death in a neglected backwater where blown out meth labs punctuate cracked highways and dying woodlands. Winter's Bone forces the viewer to confront a dire existence they'd rather be blissfully ignorant of, and leaves them with a lingering, haunting feeling of chilly loneliness. 2. Jar City it would be remiss not to acknowledge Scandinavia's reputation as a powerhouse of noir fiction. Nordic noir, as it is commonly known, includes pioneering works such as The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo and The Killing, and has spawned countless imitators and remakes in Britain and America. Following Erlender, a gloomy and antisocial police inspector, Jar City opens with the detective investigating a grisly murder whose culprit has left clues suggesting an aging grievance and a vengeful motive. Pursuing further leads, Erlender uncovers a grim story of historical crimes whose consequences are significantly more far-reaching and tragic than could ever have been predicted. The film's tone is ghoulish and unsettling throughout, with its exhumation of corpses and repulsive food motifs making one's skin crawl. A strange pitch-black humour also permeates Jar City's bleak examination of vengeful and familial breakdown, and the film is even more distinctive and nightmarish for it. 1. Brick The directorial debut of visionary author Ryan Johnson, Brick is an anachronism stew that takes almost every trope of film noir, turns them inside out, and has devilish fun with them in a modern American high school setting. In a fabulous bit of Dawson casting, a dowdy and dishevelled Joseph Gordon-Levitt plays Brandon Fry, a loner at San Clement High School with an uncanny nose for investigation. Following a mysterious and panicked phone call from his ex-girlfriend Emily, who he finds dead shortly afterwards, Brendan insinuates himself into an underground drug ring he believes to be responsible. His quest is not simply to bring the killer to justice, but the person who orchestrated the killing, putting her in front of the gun. Every archetype of film noir is present here with a modern twist. The popular society girl as the femme fatale, the assistant vice principal as the ball-busting police chief, the basement-dwelling drug dealer as the crime lord. You name it, Brick has it. It's brutal and unflinching, but also a pastiche that retains a real sense of genre-bending fun. And there you have it folks, 10 gripping neo-noirs you must see before you die. Feel free to drop this video a like if you enjoyed it, and drop me a follow on Twitter at YouSlyDogU. I'm Will for What Culture, thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you next time.